Hi, I'm Nate and this is Photo Learningism. We're going to continue on that mini series with tips and tricks for Krita. If you haven't seen it, uh, have a look over there in that corner with the card and get caught up and see the other uh, really great tips that we've been looking at over the last uh, few weeks or so. Today, we're going to look at how to custom make your own brushes really easily to make them powerful and what you want. Let's do that right now. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you for being here. Let's jump on over to it. So just to get the specifics out of the way, this is Krita Beta 5.1. So I'm going to work on the, uh, the Pixel Brush Editor, which is not something new, by the way. It's been around since version 4, I believe. But in order to do it, what I'd suggest we start is in Krita, pick a brush that is somewhat close to what you want to start working with. You don't have to keep really any of the settings of it, but it helps if it's somewhat in the ballpark just to make it somewhat easier on yourself. So I'm going to start with this one here. I like the airbrushes. And I'm going to come up here to this button that looks kind of like the squiggle with the, uh, the line marks. This is the brush editor. So first thing you'd want to do is click Save New Brush Preset and give this a unique name. It can really be anything. I haven't found any special characters that don't work yet, um, but that seems to be pretty flexible. You can load in your own image for this if you want or keep what's there, whatever suits you. The option's there if you so desire. I'm going to keep the one that's there just to keep this nice and simple. And that creates a new brush for us to work with. So. Looking at all these options, I'm not going to do them all because there's so many we could spend hours doing that. But I am going to cover the more powerful pieces of it and then invite you to go try it out and share your discoveries with us in the comments below, uh, which may be um, enhancing to this this initial tutorial here, this tip, is, tip and trick. All right. So up top, you have the general brush settings. You do have the auto settings, which gives you some flexibility in which you can start kind of custom tailoring what it is. The ratio is going to be the um, difference of ellipsoid to sphere. Uh, so all the way up is a full sphere. And as you scale back, it becomes more of an ellipsoid. Uh, so however you want to shape that brush. Also, you can further tweak how this goes with the fade. This is the amount of feathering on the edge. You can also enhance that or tweak it a little bit with the mask type. You can make it soft, which is a little bit more of a hard edge with some feathering, and then default, which is, again, same idea, just more of a harder edge. So I like to keep Gaussian because it's nice and smooth. I also like to flip on anti-aliasing usually because that makes it cleaner for the transition. Uh, one last thing here is the shape. You could use a square if you want. Um, circle is traditional, but you could use a, a square as well. Randomness will mean the amount of variance as you paint, so you can play with that a little bit if you'd like to check that out and um, add some more uh, depth or some more difference to your strokes. I'm going to shift this over here to the right. This is pretty cool in that it gives you an opportunity to test out what it is you're working on. Um, so I'm going to do that over here and mess around a little bit. You can click the trash can to clear it at any time and keep testing out if you make changes and going through with those things. Moving back again, we've been working on the auto tab. You have another choice here where you could go with some predefined settings. These are cool because you can actually import your own custom made tip. If you're familiar with GIMP, you are very familiar with this concept of how you use an image file and make it a brush tip. Same idea. It supports ping and a couple different uh, vector types. Um, so as long as it has a transparent background, I believe that's the general rule here, where you could have designed your own tip that you're after, load it into the options here, and then use it. Um, so I'm going to start with just one of these speckly ones, because those are pretty cool. And let's just see what that looks like for now. And to make this a little simpler, and I'll say why in a minute, I'm going to turn this off down here, and we'll come back to that. So for the moment, we have just that pattern with just the speckles. Okay? So... That is where we are for the moment. It's going to keep the color, by the way, that you had set outside of this. And I think to a degree, whatever sizing you start with. So keep that in mind when you try this out. So 
looking at the different options here, I will mention blend mode. Um, if you've not, if you're not familiar with blending modes, uh, go check out that card. I talk about it in a different approach. However, it's it's the same whether it's applied for brushes or for layers. It's really just changing how color is amplified or decreased uh, based on different algorithmic approaches. So uh, check that out. You can get a better understanding of what that is. Um, and that opacity is pretty self-explanatory as to what you plan to do with that. In most of these things, there are options like you saw in opacity here for pressure. Those are good, um, especially with the pen settings. Uh, if you're going to use a digital pen, um, again, there's a lot to do. So look for those settings when you check out these other things because they're very often there um, if you enable them that you can have those options. Uh, pressure sensitivity is that if you apply more force with your digital pen, it'll come with more hardness. Or if you ease off, you just kind of feather it on the digital tablet, it will have le it'll be lighter. It'll have less pressure, actual pressure in the effect. So those are really cool to play with. Take a look at those as you work through these options and things. Now, the last thing that you saw me turn off earlier, this same approach in mind it is this thing down here, the mast brush tip. This is really cool because it adds actually a second layer on top of the other tip. You can have a multi-tipped brush. So I'm going to flip that on for a second here. And I'm going to apply this one. And let's just see what that does now. Where now we have kind of this multi-effect where it has the speckles, but they're in the kind of that star format that I chose. And I can change this a little bit uh, to show you again. It follows the two patterns that are, are working together in cooperation. So you could have a textured uh, frill brush <laughs> all at the same time, depending on the kind of effect you're after. It's also really useful if you want to be able to try a certain kind of painting and tone it back where you have a layered brush and then you take that away or you make a second brush uh, to do that um, using some of those tips. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And again, you could import your own custom tip again in this mash masked brush overlay, which is really, really cool. So as you go, I'll mention this because this is kind of a caveat. You do want to use the overwrite brush button. That's the same as saving as you go. Uh, if you do save new brush preset, that will actually make a whole nother brush, which you're free to do. But again, understand every time you do that, it creates a brand new brush. So those are the differences between those two. And that is really how you create your own brush. If I were to come back over here, I now have the flexibility to use that custom brush that I just created um, and add that to do my illustration, my graphic design, and even my photo touch up. So hope that's helpful. Hope that was informative for you to learn how to make your own brushes in Krita. Again, this is the beta five release one. There's more coming and the KDE team did promise that they're gonna do their best to get the full version five out in September. We're waiting all with uh, anticipation to see if that's gonna happen or not. It's gonna be soon. <laughs> Whether it's September or not, it's gonna be soon. So be excited with me, I hope you are. Uh, give me a thumbs up if this was useful. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community of learners where we share our experiences to make each other stronger. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. I'll see you at the next video.